Hi guys and welcome back. I want to introduce you to a brand new real fun boat kit from the nice folks at the Interaction Company. You might know that I have this large layout expansion going on and it's a seaport. And of course for a seaport you gotta have some boats. I haven't got enough complement of boats ever. So the nice folks here at Interaction came out with the CR Lamb Sternwheeler. I actually found an obscure reference to it about a year and a half ago and they weren't ready to produce it yet. Well eventually I got it. It looks to be a real fun model. I'll show you basically how it goes together. The parts come packaged amazingly well. It looks like a big commercial operation rather than a ma and pa. They give you lots of very specific information about where the parts are and how you can find them, stuff like that. And as far as the directions go, you get a veritable book. It's page after page after page of interesting things. Now this Lamb Stern Sternwheeler was actually a real boat that plied the waters of British Columbia. What's fun in this information that they give you, they give you the whole story of the boat and the people that ran it and the place and times. Pretty fun. Getting down to the model, there's a whole bunch of different kinds of parts. You've got press wood, you've got press paper, you've got real wood, you've got metal, you've got all kinds of stuff, resin, and all the parts are exceptionally well made. You do have to do a little tidy up here and there, so take your time and make sure that everything is right before you put it together. For coloring this, I'm not going to use any paint. I'm going to use my marking pens and my weathering powders and, of course, my stains. I found this pressed paper stuff takes not only the markers really well, but it also takes the dry weathering powders exceptionally well. So you can use pretty much any kind of coloring that you want on these kits. Of course, you can never have too many handy helpers. I have all kinds of stuff, pins and weights and tape and rubber bands and stuff like that. You need to be able to hold things together while the glue's going off. For the windows, they give you window material, but I like this clear stuff. Uh, it's This particular one's a tester's product, and you can make the windows yourself so you don't have to glue in the other ones. Moving right along, you'll find there's lots of extra parts and pieces, lots of detail stuff that's included in the kit. They gave me these little teeny tiny brass balls, which I think they were supposed to be used for doorknobs. But I couldn't hardly see them, let alone glue them into place, so I didn't use them. You might want to. Now at this time, before you put the top deck on, you're not going to be able to reach inside after everything is in place. So I decided to weather and put stuff on at this time, so I can get in there. Now what are boats for? Well, boats are to move people and move stuff. I always keep odd lot junk laying around that I can use to pile up to look like loads of stuff being shipped. And as you can see here, I've got people, I've got loads and things in place to make it look like it has some reason to exist. I always like to make a story up about every one of the people that are on the boat, what they're doing, why they're there, where they're going, stuff like that. Now the one thing I did have a problem with, this kit comes with a bunch of tabs and holes. Well, there's so many tabs I couldn't get them all lined up. Well, modeling by Dennis. What did I do? I just nipped off a better part of the pins and then everything fit together. They give you all kinds of information about what to do and where to cut things and how to make things look good. And once again, we're back to lots of handy helpers. Now putting the top house on, make sure it's exactly in the correct place or else the whole kit won't look right. Now I thought I was going to be having trouble with the railing, but it turned out that it was quite easy. You do have to bend it at the exact right angle, but besides that, it ended up really easy to put on and it came out looking really nice. Now the paddle wheels were what you might call a study in frustration. If you're in a hurry, if you haven't got any time, don't start on the paddle. Make sure you have plenty of time to work on it and plenty of patience. I found a glass of wine helped me a great deal. Now you start putting on the rest of the parts here and there. 
The most important final thing to do is to put all the guy wires up. They give you wire to do this with, but I like this easy line much better. I use it for telephone wires and stuff like that, and it's an amazingly strong, stretchy stuff. It looks every bit as good as the wire, and it comes out really nice. So what do you think? This kit came out really nice. It was really fun. It took me about, oh, nine hours to build, eight or nine hours, something like that. And it's really a wonderful addition to my seaport. So what do you think? This model was way good fun. This paddle boat from the Interaction Hobbies folks, their Canadian company. It comes in multiple different scales. So whether you do HO or N or I don't even know if they have any bigger ones. Maybe. I know he was working on it. And if you have a seaport or if you have a lake or if you have any kind of water effect, this would be a wonderful addition to your scene. So have fun, folks. Thanks for joining me. Come back and see me again sometime soon. Bye now.